Ronan Farrow, who is often a guest around here, has done a documentary for HBO. You can see it on Max about the dying of local newspapers. Every single week in America, on average, two local newspapers die. More than 2,500 of them have closed since 2005. By 2025, the U.S. is on track to have lost one-third of its newspapers, a third in the 20 years since Facebook became Facebook. I don't need to tell you that Wall Street has chewed up journalism and there are real dangers involved to democracy when things like this and checks and balances are destroyed. Eric Meyer is joining us now, and he's the editor-in-chief. He's joining us from the editor-in-chief's office at The Record in Marion, Kansas. And I don't know if you saw this, Stugatz, but the police department that his paper was reporting on basically did stuff that you don't expect to happen in a democracy where they raided his office and I think took the computer he's joining us on now. Uh, Eric, thank you for joining us. I saw a piece in the Washington Post here about some of these details. Uh, wh walk me through the day of, I guess it was August uh, 11th. Can you explain to us what happened? Huh. Explain? I, I, I still am having trouble explaining it. I can tell you what happened. Uh, a simultaneous raid, something you know, you'd expect for the, the Medellin drug cartel involving every police officer in the eastern half of Marion County. Uh, they even brought some extras in that day, descended upon our newsroom, uh, my and my 98-year-old mother's home, and the home of the vice mayor of Marion. And we stood around waiting. They, they threw the people out of the newspaper office while they searched it. Uh, they let my mother stay in her house, uh, but uh, I don't know exactly what they did with the vice mayor, but they searched it for evidence of documents that we had obtained from a source that we'd actually told them we had obtained it from the source. Uh, we told them where it was. Uh, so did the vice mayor. Uh, the vice mayor even sent him a copy of it. Uh, there was, in fact, a, a, a physical copy of it sitting right here on my desk. Uh, next to the computer I, I that was seized, they didn't take it. So we've never been quite sure why they decided that they needed to raid our office. Uh, the document that had been given to us by a source came off of a public website that the people operating it, the state of Kansas, say anyone's free to, to access. There's no limitations on it. Uh, but we spent three hours or so being searched and, and and then having our computer seized. We're still trying to get back data. Uh, they they cloned one of our hard drives and part of our network, 17 gigabytes of data that they still have custody of that uh, we're trying to get back from them, as a, in addition to a whole bunch of photographs they took. Among other things, my mother said they photographed my bank statement, uh, which I don't quite know why. Billy, what are you laughing about back there? Well, they just, uh, in the raid, they seem to have maybe injured the balloon behind you that's kind of just deflating slowly <laughs> oh, going yes. up and down. Yeah. Was it yes. your birthday? Happy birthday. Like a week it, ago, it, right? it, it was. Ago. It was on Wednesday of last week. That's what yes. I thought. And, it and, looks and, like that. It looks like the sad birthday balloon from last yes, week. It looks it's, like it's, it's the struggling. sad birthday balloon. Exactly. Uh, Juju, put it on the poll, uh, please, at Levitard Show. Uh, is uh, five days too long to have a birthday balloon still in your office at Levitard yes, Show? Yes, it is. He's been through a Definitely. lot, Dan. I mean, come on. It's been a week, Dan. Well, yeah. what, what, do you, what do you attribute? To, can you take us through some of the backstory on, on how it is that this happened? Like, obviously, you weren't expecting this, but uh, no. what, what, uh, what were they trying to accomplish? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we, we'd offered to help them. Uh, and, in fact, they knew where we'd gotten the document from. They, they, the, the vice mayor got it from the same place we did, and she told him. Uh, so we don't know why they're searching us. They never searched the person who, in fact, no one even from law enforcement even spoke to that person until last Thursday. And that was the Kansas Bureau of Investigation coming in to try to figure out what the heck was going on here. Uh, they didn't talk to us. As I said, we sent them a note saying we've got this document. Uh, we don't plan to use it because it was really a squabble in a divorce case. 
that had some relevance because the the person involved hadn't had a driver's license legally for 14 years and was asking for a liquor license, which is why the vice mayor got involved. Uh, She was questioning whether it ought to be investigated. The city administrator, uh, a week before the raid, sent out an email to the mayor saying, we've decided we're not going to, this police department's not going to do anything about this. The mayor and the police chief met, and then suddenly we and the vice mayors were raided. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, the mayor and the police chief, neither one of them like us very much. Uh, the, ma- the police chief doesn't like us because we'd been doing some research on him and his past uh, uh, critics of his his performance in the past. Uh, he left a $110,000 a year job to go to a $60,000 a year job here. Uh, and the reason was, and he finally admitted this, that he was being demoted uh, for making sexually inappropriate uh, actions toward a, a subordinate. Uh, he had denied that earlier and we had not run our story, but we had all the research from it. It's on one of the computers that got seized. And the mayor has made no question about the fact that he doesn't like us, nor does he like the vice mayor. So it's kind of interesting. You don't raid the place that prov- got the information. You raid the place that received it from that person, the two places, and you already knew it because we disclosed it to him already. And at said, if you, we don't see any follow-up here, but if you want follow-up, you know, let us know and we'll, we'll talk to you. And they didn't talk to us. Eric, this is a small town. It's under 2000 people. How many police officers came in and did you know all of them? There were seven altogether. Uh, the entirety of the Marion police force, except for one officer who quit uh, that week and went to work for a different town. And they even brought in a part-time officer uh, in addition for the entirety of the Marion police force, plus three sheriff's deputies. And at that time of day, that's usually the number that are on duty for the whole county. And you know most of these people, do you not? Because it's yeah. a small town. Well, one, one, one of the people is next door neighbor. Uh, <laughs> uh and he was down at the record office. He later went up, I think, to my mother's house. Uh, I, I ended up getting down to the record. I was with her when they first came in. Uh, she was tried to rationally talk to the two of them that were there for an hour and a half, uh, just waiting. Uh, and then when five more came in and, and sort of uh, uh, took over her house, she became a little frustrated with them and, and, and uh, spoke up about it. And she got very upset with them and back very upset just in general she wouldn't eat she wouldn't sleep she wouldn't do anything and she died the next day um and and sort of a broken heart syndrome that she'd spent she still worked for the paper she she worked every week uh one day a week uh assembling these you know the column of you know 15 years ago 30 years ago 45 years ago uh, people did these things popular in small towns. Uh, she hadn't been able to actually write it for the past year because of some vision problems, but she'd work with me and I'd read it to her and she'd decide what we we're going to put in the column. But prior to that, till she was 97, she did everything herself and she's a very strong willed woman. And, you know, nobody even dared to edit her copy. I mean, it was, it was, uh, she was very careful about it. So, uh, but she got very frustrated. Uh, it was, and then they took all our computers away. So took her computer, took her router, took my laptop, took my cell phone, took my computer at work, took our server, took our backup disks, took two of our reporters' computers, took their cell phones, injured one of the reporters grabbing the cell phone from her hand, and then took the vice mayor's computer and cell phone as well. Eric, I am so sorry about your mother. You believe that this ended her life you believe that the uh, cert- Aj- the ajita of this affected it her. certainly contributed to it and and i will say that the coroner who had previously been her family physician for several years uh, even noted this in the coroner's death report do you have any precedent that you can think of for something like this in this country that, that you Abs- even, that you've heard of well, there was a case way back in the 1980s at the Stanford Daily, and as a result of that case, federal law was changed to say that 
by and large, you don't issue search warrants for news organizations. You subpoena them, give them a chance to have a hearing, and and uh, then they can argue one way or the other whether their material should be released. But other than that, no, the, the idea of a raid. In fact, when I was talking to our lawyer right afterward, he says, what kind of in libel insurance do you have? And I said, well, I gave him the company. And he says, good, because there's a provision in there for newsroom seizures. And I said, there is. Uh, it happened so rarely that we'd never even noticed that there was a provision in the contract. I was talking to the insurance people the other day, and they said, this is the first time they've ever had to, you know, follow through on this claim. They, it's unprecedented for them. So uh, it, it is a largely unprecedented thing in the United States. Uh, I taught for 26 years at the University of Illinois, taught journalism before I retired to this is this is my retirement hobby, I guess. Uh but uh, I had a student from Egypt who, you know, this kind of stuff happened in Egypt all the time. Uh, this was a way of intimidating news organizations. And in fact, the two of us did a paper for a scholarly conference on what it did to journalism as a result of that, uh, making journalism very timid and, and afraid to report almost anything as a straight out fact. They just... Uh, you know, little hints of instead of there's an expl bomb explosion in town, people heard a loud sound. You know, and like two hours later, fire trucks were seen driving toward the loud sound. Uh, incremental reporting was the way they get around. And I could see that that chilling effect happening in the United States. And as as Dan mentioned early on, you know, Wall Street has killed journalism and former newspapers in the United States. I, I've often joked that uh, my little newspaper here in Marion, Kansas, will be one of the 10 largest media companies in the United States, not because we're going to expand, but there won't be nine others uh, before long. It will just be all some chain that has sold their real estate, got rid of their reporters, uh, fills the paper with junk, uh, and as a result, the public doesn't know anything about what's going on. Uh, and it kind of becomes a, a, a scene from Pleasantville. Everybody goes into black and white and everything's just pleasant. Eric, thank you for being on with us. I'm sorry we badgered you about what should have been a celebratory balloon. Uh, I apologize on behalf of our show. No, don't worry about it. I, I, I was, I just had the, the, incoming mayor was in here and it was batting him in the face and i i thought well maybe we'll let it hang around for that purpose uh, <laughs> uh, well happy birthday to well you. in fact we, we can watch you take it down now and and just uh, ceremonially we can uh, be done with it there we go uh, let it go man we, we, stab it with a with a yeah, scissor yeah, pair yeah, of scissors let's see let's see how we do this here uh, um and this right well, here, i don't know you, this is you a have a vowel moment. on it it's like in the helium maybe uh, let's yeah, see suck here. in the helix uh, so you can hear your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, funny, yeah. high voice. <laughs> He's got a great voice. He's got a great broadcast. It'd be funny, voice. really high pitched. He's got a great. <laughs> He's going for it. Audio, audio system. He is trying to help us here. Yeah. We're gonna see him. We're gonna see. We've got to ride this joke out to see oh, if. Wow, he that's can... quite the knife. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> Whoa, dude, oh, got everything. Christ. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> More. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!